The Silver Locket Written by K.D. Read by Katie B. Turner <laughs> Feel weaved flowers into a crown as she hummed sweet songs to herself. Her hands worked automatically, repeating the motions that, after forty years, were as familiar to her as brushing her own hair. The hills were wet with dew, and the sky painted a deep blue. Only a single cloud, far and distant, smudged the perfect sight. Miss Phil Egger? Yes? She looked at the grim man, her hands still working. The new state has declared you sick with wealth. They have agreed to relieve you of your illness. If you refuse, you are to consider this a 24-hour notice of your execution. Your options are laid out in this pamphlet. Confused, Phil took the paper from the man and asked, Sick with wealth? I have given nearly everything I have to the people of this town. What else can I give? Well, that necklace would do nicely. Phil recoiled with shock. Her mouth moved to foreign words, but no sound came out. By the time she found the words, the man was already grasping the silver locket, hanging from her neck. It's all that I have left. I cannot simply let you take it. Then I shall see you tomorrow at the gallows, the man sighed. He started walking down the dirt path. Without turning, he added, I recommend that you reconsider. Phil stood, grasping the locket tightly, long after the man was out of sight. That night, Phil stared blankly at the pamphlet, while a whirlpool of thoughts went through her mind. Would she give herself willingly to death, as she had already given everything else? She had given her furniture and paintings to feed the fires of those with no warmth. She gave her clothes to those who would otherwise go naked. Her crops went to the families with no other way to stave off hunger. During the Dark Knight War, she had given her time and labor, assisting doctors with injured soldiers, sometimes going for days without rest. She had even given her son, Kilios, to the cause his life lost on the battlefield. She mumbled, she mumbled to herself, all that was given and all that was lost. While she pondered her personal past, those around her performed the traditional preparations for the Festival of Light. Each family was entitled to a single candle during the festival. On the left corner of the room, closest to the door, Ostis Bagel told her five daughters legends of nature spirits that came to life during summer. Further in the room, next to a window with the full moon in sight, the little triplets performed whispered spells of fertility and abundance. On the opposite side of the room, two candles allowed for Malria, Kenda, and four young girls to weave flower crowns for the summer dance. The women lived together. They all shared this house, meals, this living room, and their grief. What troubles your mind, Phil? Kenda asked. What makes you think that my... What makes you think that my mind is troubled? The woman raised an eyebrow. You have yet to light your candle. Perhaps someone else will be in more need of it. And you need it not. I don't suppose you've learned to read in the dark? Phil paused, not wanting to disrupt the high spirits of the festival preparation. Finally, she whispered, I've been given notice. <laughs> Kenda hit the table with the palm of her hand, attracting the attention of everyone else in the room. You? Out of all people... What else can you give? I mean, what, what even are they asking you for? They want to take my son, 
she said, unclasping her hands. Inside them, the locket was open. A painted portrait of a young man looked up at them both. If I part from this, he ceases to exist. Loved ones don't live. Loved ones don't live in objects field. They live within our memories. Kenda softened her tone. As long as you live and remember, he will live too. My mind is failing me, Kenda. More often now, I find myself unable to recall the words someone has just spoken, or where I intend to go when I start walking. Feel paused, searching for words, then added, I tell of the time Kelios learned to swim, and I am unable to recall the weather or the color of his hair. And then I am confronted with a terrible dread, a fear that I might forget him altogether. Inside this locket he is safe. He will not waste away like my memories. When they are all gone, and I know they soon will be, names, words, faces, I'll have this locket with his face. I lost him once. I cannot lose him again. Well, you must explain this to them, one of the witches said. The new state has allowed us to keep our knowledge, our books and crystals and herbs. Why should this locket be to you any different than what a wand is to us? You've given us all shelter, food and warmth with nothing but a smile and love in your heart, said Ostas Bagel. We will go with you to support you in your plea. When the sun had washed the fields with gold, sixteen women stood before a jury and a hanged man. The time came for Field to speak. I, she started, but her mind left her. She looked around, confused. All eyes were on her. The event had attracted most of the village, people that knew her, people that supported her. Field swallowed. Her mind was blank. All she could do was to hold the silver locket close to her heart as tears fell down her cheeks. It was one of the witch sisters that spoke first. She has given us shelter and home, though we share not traditions and practices. Well, she was a nurse during the war. She saved my husband, added someone else. Soon everyone was giving testimonies of her kindness. No action, however small, was left unrecognized. The jury raised a hand, silencing all of them. A web of tension threaded through the hall in the long moments during the jury's deliberation. The claim is justified. Keep your trinket. The people rejoiced into the night as the festival of lights made the streets bright as day the normal frivolity amplified by the townspeople's relief over the verdict. As the flower crowns withered in the days following the festival, so did Feel's mind. She never recovered, but she was taken care of by the people of the town. And although her mind failed her, her sight never did. Every time she looked at the portrait, she kissed the locket unable to remember the young man's name, but knowing in her heart that the man in the portrait was as important to her as her own life. <laughs>